The president believes that these allegations are very troubling uh, and should be taken seriously. And he thinks that the people of Alabama should make the decision on who their next senator should be. This is an effort by Mitch McConnell and his cronies to steal this election. Release the yearbook so that we can determine is it genuine or is it a fraud? And he just mashed his, his lips against my face and he stuck his tongue in my mouth so fast. And that's more than anybody needs to know. Welcome to the show. It is Thursday. I'm Bill Tucker. Co-hosting with me tonight is Liz Peak. Liz is a columnist with the Financial Times. She's also with The Hill. And while today you can find her here with me for the hour, you can also find her anytime you want to at her own website, lizpeak.com. Liz, it's good to have you. Thank since, you. Since I last saw you and we last spoke, you went on vacation. Because I you did. want a wonderful sense of perspective, maybe. Yes, I went to Morocco, where there are thousands of years of history and civilizations doing each other in. And you know what? You come back thinking <laughs> the tax bill is not the end of the world, uh, although I think it's really important. Oh, so yeah. that, that sense of detachment uh, lasted about 30 minutes actually. <laughs> well, it was wonderful that you could have it for that yes, long. Yes, I totally agree. Yeah, little no. perspective. Well, here's what we've got on the plate tonight, because we, you, as you probably know, the Republicans have passed one version of tax yes. reform. House passing its own version, sending it over to the Senate. Senate has a different idea about tax reform. Will they, won't they pass a bill? And if they do, is it a good thing? Fortunately, we have Liz with us, along with Carol Roth, who will be joining us later to inform us and help us decide about this stuff. And the first White House briefing in two weeks was dominated with questions about Roy Moore. The president calls the allegations, as you heard at the top of the show, troubling and serious. But he says it's up to the folks in Alabama to decide who they want to represent them in the Senate. And the allegations of sexual assault just continue to be levered. This time it's against Senator Al Franken. The senator says he remembers the situation from a little differently from Leanne Tweeden. But he says, well, OK, I'm kind of sorry. Is that enough? Every day brings more allegations against more and more men. Could this be, I ask, a cultural awakening? Maybe it could be a good thing. Maybe there could be a silver lining in all of this. And you know who would be really good to start off this topic? Tom DeLay, AKA the hammer. He can talk sexual politics, he can talk revolution, and he can talk taxes. He is joining us here with, with his, his former Majority Leader of the House. He is uh, a, a radio show host for the Washington Times and author of the book Revival, Revolution, and Rebirth. And remember, we're taking your phone calls. We want to hear from you at 1877 Newsmax. That's 1877 639 7629. Tom, Good to see you. So let's, instead of starting off with stuff in the house and taxes and stuff, I actually really do want to ask you this. You wrote a book, Revival, Rebirth, and, and Revolution. Are these allegations of sexual abuse a, a, a cultural awakening that maybe, maybe things in America have gotten out of control and gone a little bit too far and maybe we're coming to our senses? Could I, am I hoping too much here? No, but it, it does help to highlight that we are in a cultural war in this country. Uh, we've, we've killed 60 million babies. Um, we, we've undermined our family with, uh, through the Supreme Court. Uh, we've done a lot of things. That's what my book is about. If we don't put God back into the public square and have a revolution for the Constitution, um, this country is doomed. I think the question is, are we uncovering something here that's just new, or has this kind of behavior gone on for an awfully long time, and finally people are feeling empowered to speak up about it? I mean, I, I sort of go back and forth between thinking this is a terrific moment because, yes, women should not be abused in the way that we've been discussing with all these various characters. Uh, on the other hand, you kind of hope that this doesn't get out of hand and become, as President Trump might say, a real witch hunt, because that doesn't really serve either side or either anybody really very well well it is it is out of hand uh, but this is not new uh, I, I remember impeaching a president uh, for one. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking you might bring that up um, and I, I remember when the Democrats all rallied around him and still rally around him uh, and yet when it came up for Roy Moore 30 days before an election when nothing could be done about it it's all okay, and we're all going to rush to, to judgment. I, Liz, I, you know, because you work for the Hill, I've experienced this kind of thing. I, I spent 18 years with Nancy Pelosi 
uh, uh, making allegations against me, all kinds of ethics charges. She even filed a racketeering suit against me. She, uh, she charged me with trying to defeat uh, Democrats. Everything dismissed as frivolous. And then a rogue uh, DA indicted me on a law that doesn't even exist in Texas. And I was ultimately exonerated. So I went through 18 years of this. Uh, and I know what the Democrats are capable of. And that's why I stand, now I stand with uh, President Trump. The people of Alabama need to understand whether the allegations are true or not, this is not the way to deal with them. Uh, and to use these allegations for political, uh, uh, criminal, the criminalization of politics and character assassination right before an election. The people of Alabama are being misserved and trying to be manipulated into voting for a Democrat that would abort a baby the day before it's supposed to be born. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think it's I think it's a very tough argument, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think uh, uh, Judge Moore uh, obviously is someone who has made a career out of not bending to public opinion, uh, going his own way. He has a lot of fans. There's no question about it. But these are pretty troubling allegations from so many women. I my personal thing is I don't think. This particular issue should be politicized, but it has been. And by the way, I think Democrats are very vulnerable, as you point out on this, because whether it's Al Franken or Bill Clinton, they position themselves as the party that is really in, in the court of women, that they are really pro-women's rights and, and protection of women uh, across the board, economically and everything else. Uh, I think that they don't look very good. I think the hypocrisy is running pretty deep uh, when, in fact, they turned their back on allegations about President Clinton. And those were really, those were, that was an awful time. And to see these people now coming out and saying, maybe I should have believed Juanita Broderick, mm -hmm. you know, give me a break. You had your chance and, uh, you know, you whiffed, <laughs> basically. Liz, Liz, where are they on Menendez? Menendez yeah, has been... I agree. I mean, Senator McConnell's talking about an ethics inquiry into Menendez. I think he's totally right. I think that's a, you know, here's somebody who by just a hair was basically uh, declared a mistrial on some pretty serious ethics charges. This is not the occasional gift or, or something of that sort. These were very, very lavish, uh, you know, presumably or allegedly paybacks for favors done. I think there should be something more than a mistrial to show for it. Well, and, and we also need to talk about Roy Moore. I didn't know Roy Moore 40 years ago, but I knew, I've known Roy Moore for over 20 years, and I've known him to be a man of faith. Uh, if he was like that 40 years ago, he certainly isn't like that now. He walks with Jesus Christ. Uh, he, he stands, he puts God above everything and the Constitution, uh, and he stands on the Constitution, and he has exhibited that. He, he's exhibited integrity, uh, faith, honor and country uh, and we can't discount that just because of uh allegations that have uh of events 40 years ago well you know what we're going to leave that topic aside and go to taxes because we've got about four minutes left here and i, and I want to get your assessment of what's going on here the house did manage to pass this there were 13 republicans who, who held back and voted with republicans against it but it moves forward it goes to the senate it, it looks as if tom it faces a uncertain future just uh, would be probably the fairest way to say it in the Senate because they have a very different kind of, of bill. I don't want to make this a process question, but what happens n now? Does the Senate pass its own version and then that goes to reconciliation or, or are they are they chewing the fat already up there? Well, let me let me I'm glad you brought it up because I do want to make it a process answer. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> the it's bill inevitable. in the house. The bill in the House could have been a lot better, but the, the House chose to write a bill that they think could get through the Senate and their arcane rules. Now, now we never did that when I was in leadership. The House always took a, a very strong stand, and then we worked with the Senate. Uh, and, and that's why they're having trouble uh, convincing the American people that this is good for America. By and large, it is good for America. But, but now you will get over to the Senate, and you, you run up against something called the Bird Rule. The Bird Rule was written by Democrats, by Robert Byrd, uh, to make sure that it was extremely difficult to cut taxes and cut spending. Now, and now the Senate is trying to write a, a, a bill that, that will be uh, adhered to the Bird Rule. I mean, what that means is the, the tax rates that have come down only last 10 years and then they go away. 
<laughs> I think the problem, I think we have so many issues between the Senate and the House versions, uh, but I think that the, the real problem here, there are two. One is that John McCain shot down the effort to deep six Obamacare taxes and fees and therefore set back uh, the opportunity to, to cut taxes by about a trillion and a half dollars over 10 years. So thank you, John McCain, for making this much, much more difficult. The second problem is uh, that, in, a, in essence, Democrats from the starting gate were not going to play ball on tax reform. Even though Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, and any number of other Democratic leaders have talked about corporate taxes needing to come down, how yeah. we're uncompetitive, uh, you know, Chuck Schumer out of the gate had this pictured as a uh, handout to big corporations and to the rich, and that's been his selling point even before the bill was crafted. He had no idea what was in the bill, and that was his message. And he's still lying about the fact that it doesn't help. He has said numerous times it doesn't help middle class Americans. We know that that's not true. Uh, but anyway, Democrats aren't going to help, so that's why they have to go, go through these hoops. And I agree with you, it's very unfortunate. I think they'll get these two bills together. I think they'll solve the problems. Ron Johnson uh, it has yeah. a particular issue, and I think that's going to be resolved because of the you Obamacare uh, relief. 60 votes to, to your filibustering. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Now I have to get 60 votes uh, to, to, to stop it. No, I'm just kidding. The, 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 point, the point is, is these arcane rules keep us from doing the best we can for the American people. They're, they're rules that were set up as, to make it harder to cut taxes. And you, you bring up the, uh, the, the, the mandate in Obamacare. The, I think it's very smart that, that they took that and are repealing it in the tax bill because that, according to Senate rules, allows them to, to cut taxes $330 billion more. Yeah. The point is, yeah. is they need to get rid of these rules so they, they can do what the American people sent them to Congress to do. You know, and Tom, that's the Lord. Tom, I only got about 10, 20 seconds left here. Really quickly, do you think they're going to push through? Do you think they can get this done? Yes, I do. It's Excellent. not going to be what it should be, but it's it's going to be it's going to be pretty good, and it's going to stimulate some growth. Well, it, 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 as all of us know, because we're all grown-ups at the table here, nothing ever starts out and finishes up perfect in, in, in Congress. It just doesn't work that Amen. way. But uh, we can take what we can get. Tom, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Appreciate it, as always. You betcha. All right, coming up next, the lady herself, the billion-dollar dealmaker, Kara Roth, is going to be with us. She's going to talk taxes with us as well. Maybe she can make some sense out of this craziness. And why don't we just get rid of the bird rule? That's the question on the table. We'll be right back.